right, yay, I can shave. <laughs> I, I see this, I didn't have this when, because uh, I said I'm not, I'm not shaving until this guy comes out and says something. Okay, so Ron Paul has finally come out and made a statement. It's great. Humble man. I mean, you just got to love this guy. <laughs> Right. It's not running the best campaign ever and the most clear campaign. I could have sent an email out that said, hey, anyway. But if you listen to it, I have it linked below. If you, I'm sure that by the time you, I load this up, you'll have already seen it. But the, the story is, remains the same. We go to Tampa, get as many delegates as possible. You know, this fight isn't over. We just keep going. We don't let up now. Right? Okay. That's coming from the lips of Ron Paul. See, and I didn't want to come out and say stuff like that and then have Ron Paul come out and say, well, yep, campaign's over, right? In Hawaii, we call that making ass. I didn't think he would, but it's true. When you're silent like that and your son comes out on Hannity and says, oh, I'm endorsing Romney, okay, right? Okay, so, sorry, Carol, but you know what? Fuck Ron Paul, all right? And then, and just, you know, this... My use of expletives does not belie my inferior intelligence. It belies my anger at a man that would come out and endorse somebody like Romney. He's a war pig. And what we have is the establishment and the bankers saying, Hey, look, you can have this war pig. He's a Democrat. Or you can have this war pig. He's a, he's a Republican. You can have this guy that's for the drug war and incarcerating people, you know, crimes against themselves and basically, you know making modern day slaves because they put these guys in prison and then have them work for nothing because they're prisoners and the crime that they've committed is holding a few ounces of marijuana right nonviolent offenders out that's a ron paul idea does romney or obama say anything about no they're trying to pack the prisons because they want slave labor because a lot of these guys they make you know the non-munition uh equipment for our military, right? A lot, of, a lot of prisons, right? They're not just making license plates, but they're making uniforms, and they're making, you know, the everyday tools and so forth that our military needs to go fight, with, you know, for knives and forks and stamping out, you know, pans and stuff for sea rats and so on. Anyhow, the idea is that, look, this, the, they're trying to cram these two guys down our throats, and the Ron Paul people are, no. And you guys that are saying, oh, I don't, I'm not going to be a delegate, I quit because of Rand, Rand Paul is not Ron Paul. Rand Paul is, Rand Paul is Ron Paul's son, and he is politicking. And for him to come out before the convention on Hannity, I believe the man received a credible threat. Have you heard of the Kennedys? Have you heard of Martin Luther King? Hell, they shot at Andrew Jackson. They shot at Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan comes out and says, you know... The, the Grace Commission report and tells you in no uncertain terms that the, basically that all goes to pay the interest on the money that this private central bank, this private corporation that's no more federal than Federal Express, loans us. They loan us the money at interest. How do they get their interest? How do they extract their pound of flesh? Via the IRS and the income tax. Grace Commission report says that pretty clearly. And then they, ha they right, he comes out and says that in public and they shot him practically the next day. Oh, it wasn't us. It was a lone gunman. Right? It was a lone gunman on Kennedy. It was a lone gunman on RFK. It was a lone gunman on JFK. It was a lone gunman on uh, Martin Luther King. It was a lone gunman on name it. No. It, we know the banking cartels will go to great lengths. This is why it's amazing that Ron Paul just doesn't shut up and keeps going. But I'm pretty sure they made a credible threat against Rand. And nobody will talk about it. The same way the media will not talk about, right? Because we don't want to talk about this and dirty politics and so forth. But are you kidding? These are people that will drone babies in Iraq and Afghanistan and Yemen, right? These, these are the kind of people that will give the orders, right? Pull the strings that will make it happen so that, you know, babies get blown up, right? You think that they have any qualms about making a threat against somebody like Rand Paul or Ron Paul, that would, you know, have a guy like Ron Paul getting in there and talking about ending the war, and their obscene war profits would come to an end. Their obscene drug war profits would come to the end, come to an end. The, the obscene Ponzi scheme that is the Federal Reserve would be, you know, is in jeopardy, and we would have sound money, and we'd have a people that were prosperous. Do you think they want that? Do you think that they wouldn't kill a couple of guys, right? You wouldn't think they wouldn't drop a couple of towers in New York to try and keep their, their power, or to try and, you know, usher in the Patriot Act and so forth? And, and, and then we're the ones that are conspiracy theorists. We're the ones that are crazy. The ones that, you know, just take a look at that and go, look, it's just about money. And a few thousand people, that's nothing to them. A few thousand deaths means nothing to them. Now, for you guys to, to think that, oh, we don't know what we're up against, they're thinking about spending a billion dollars, from what I understand, to try to get Romney in. Right? And we got so many people that are pissed off with Obama, he might even have a chance. 
And then there's a whole Keystone Pipeline theory about how the... Anyway, there's a whole bunch of conspiracy theory that you can look at coming from Lindsey Williams about, you know, getting Obama out and putting Romney in because they want the Keystone Pipeline and selling oil and so forth. And again, it's billions and billions of dollars. Just look at the money. So, you know, snuffing out a couple guys like Rand Paul and, and Ron Paul would be, you know, par for the course. Now, could we spend a billion, like, if, instead of spending a billion dollars on getting Romney in, what if we spent a billion dollars on, you know, radiation mitigation or radiation detection? What if we spent a billion dollars on, uh, you know, mental health for the troops so that maybe they wouldn't be committing suicide at one a day? What if we spent a billion dollars on cleaning water? What if we spent a billion dollars on putting people back to work and making bridges and roads? What if we spent a billion, I mean, ugh. Anyway, the point being is, I know what we're up against. I see what we're up against. This isn't going to be an easy fight. But see, there's a lot of lawyers out there now that have come out. And see, they can't, it's, this is a different fight. Because as Ron Paul said, it's a, I, it's a fight of ideas. It's not a fight of, of, you know, weapons or a fight of, you know, physical contest. It's ideas. And the ideas that he's talking about, freedom and liberty, have inspired humans from time immemorial. And they, I mean... Our forefathers picked up muskets and fought the most powerful empire on the planet and prevailed. And now, this generation, we're soft. And I say us, all of us. I've had an easy life. You've had an easy life. We're soft. <laughs> but fighting, this, fighting these guys is going to take a lot more than just showing up to vote every four years or every two years. Right? We've got to get involved in self-governance. And part of that self-governance is you know, getting down there and, and becoming delegates and becoming electors. And you see the kind of abuse that you're going to be up against. And you see the kind of uh, fight. You know, <laughs> now we see the violence inherent in the system. Now we see the violence inherent in the system. And see many Ron Paul people now see what I'm on about. And see what guys like us are on about. Because they come face to face. They see the vote fraud. They see the vote rigging. They see the delegate fraud and the things that they, that, you know, the, the great lengths that these guys are going to, and the rest of the country is, you know, not paying attention. Or the Democrats, they don't care because they're all about Obama. Now that free, that that squelching of freedom and liberty will affect them too. So we just happen to be the vanguard. We happen to be the guys that are going to be picking up the flag, and and fighting this fight. So the so the links down there talking about the lawyers that are that are willing to sign affidavits for or help you sign the affidavits and help you fill out the affidavits, and you see the Ninth Circuit. Every single chairperson in the Ninth Circuit has has been named in a suit. Every single circuit needs to do this, and you guys need to understand how the circuits are set up too. See, it'll be great education also. But you need to go and if you have been defrauded or if you've been intimidated or if they told you that they're going to try and hold you in contempt or if they're going to try and hit you for perjury or whatever, let's see who has the law on whose side, right? The law is on our side, my friends. But, you know, nobody takes, nobody concedes power at all. You need to take it from them. And the way you take it from them is you go down there and fight. Go down there and fight in a court of law and say, I've been defrauded, right? My civil rights were defrauded. Here's how. And you, and you, you know, list it. And you go to court, and you're going to have to fight, and it's going to take time. And it may not be resolved till after the convention, but that doesn't change anything. You put the affidavits in, and you let them know we're not standing for this. They're not going to stuff two guys down our throats that are both war pigs, right? They're not going to, right? They're not going to kill this movement. And those guys that you're there whining about how you're going to go home, and you're never going to vote again and stuff like that, screw you, go then, beat it, right? It's a country we're fighting for. And all it takes is for Rand Paul to get on Hannity and say that he's supporting the other guy and you guys quit and you're going to cry and whine and swear. And no, redouble your efforts. Told you, you got to work 10 times harder. <laughs> you got to work 10 times harder to get 10% done to be recognized. Now, we need to collect more delegates. Nothing's changed. We can lose every single battle and still win the war. Right? <laughs> as, as Ron Paul said very clearly. So what happened in Vietnam? Right? We beat them every time. You talk to Vietnam veterans, we beat them... Every time, any major battle, we beat them, right? We got the best killers and the best soldiers on the planet, right? Our guys don't mess with our guys. Even if we're fighting on the wrong side, we'll still kick your ass. Right? And many other countries need to understand this, right? You're Chinese, you're, you're Russian, you're whoever it is. You know, woe be unto our enemies. But you can still <laughs> win every battle and lose the war. All right, Romney is going to get this lesson taught to him. So is Obama. Because right? they can they can take the presidency, but they're not killing this movement. We'll take we'll take it at the local level. We'll take it at the state level. We'll take the, we'll take back the Congress. And that the main way we're going to do this is you guys got to go back and secure the vote. You guys got to get into your legislatures, into your, at the local level, and you got to get initiatives like they did in Virginia, and get paper ballots. 
because the whole way that they've been able to do this and make it look like we haven't won uh, a single thing is via the uh, stealing of the votes, the election fraud, the election rigging. So we need to make this absolutely clear uh, in the future that we're not going to stand for it and that we're going to go back to paper ballots and we've got to get involved. That means that people have to, you know, it takes people to count. Because what are they doing? They're, these people are like, oh, don't worry, we'll, co we'll count the votes for you. And as Stalin said, right, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter who votes. It's who counts the votes. We have to count the votes. You have to get involved in, in the voting process. And part of it is going down there and casting your ballot. And then you need to get, you know, it's a hassle. Don't go home and watch TV. you got to go home. Right, you got to go out and count votes. Right? And then you need vote watchers. And they do it in other countries that don't have this technology, right? <laughs> this labor-saving technology that they've sold us, right? Because it's such a pain to count ballots. Well, we need to go back to counting ballots. That's the number one thing we need to do. This is how they were able to be on TV talking about how he's lost. Because I just had a, I have some friends move to Texas, and they're like, there's Ron Paul signs down here everywhere. They're all over the place. Everywhere I look, there's a Ron Paul sign, and yet somehow Romney won Texas. Right? Okay, so, and still, Ron Paul, if he, he's filling stadiums, Romney can't put 500 people in a room. Ron Paul can put five, six, seven thousand people in a room. So, it should be clear, right? And then this is, I think, part of the reason why they got to Rand. It's like, it was just getting embarrassing. Because they do the vote flipping, they do the vote stealing, they're getting caught. So, if you know of any of this, vote fraud, if you know of delegate fraud, if you know you have your rights, these delegates have had their rights impinged or infringed or... In any way, shape, or form, you can take a lawsuit to court. These lawyers will help you. There are links down there. Okay, and again, see, they can't, they can't do it. There's too many people in too many states. They can't, they could stop our leaders, but they can't stop the movement because the people are pissed off. We've had enough, right? Guys like me making videos. Guys like you need to get out there and, you know, go to court, fight this thing in court. Because this is a battle of ideas. This is not going to be won at arms. This is the pen is mightier than the sword, my friends, and we have to go and take it, take it to them however we can. And one of the ways we're going to take it to them is in the court of law. All right. The other way we're going to take it to them is at the convention. And see, if Santorum understands that there's going to be a bit of a fight, you need to understand that there's going to be a bit of a fight, and we need to get as many delegates as we can so that we overwhelm Santorum and Santorum's people. And that we, that we absolutely can make the difference in the platform, in the rules, and so forth. And see, the difference between the national convention and all these state conventions is the media will be on the national convention. So the dirty politicking and the dirty tricks that they try to pull in some of the other conventions, they can only do that in the dark or, you know, it, when the media turns a blind eye. When people are looking, when the whole nation is watching, they won't be able to try and get a quorum when there's only 30 people there, right, or 30%. They won't be able to get, you know, try to pull the kind of stuff that they did in the state conventions because there'll be national news cameras there from all over the place. So, one, I agree with Ron Paul when he talks about you guys need to try and behave yourselves, even though we're pissed off. You still need to try and behave yourselves and go down there and get to work. Follow the rules. See, and this is what we've done all the time. All the Ron Paul people consistently have followed the rules better than the guys in the GOP. You do the same thing at the Republican National Convention. And we will change the platform. And like I said, we will take this thing back every two years and more. You have to take over the, you know, the, the nominating process, the delegate process and so forth, the chairmanships of the GOP, that whole thing. And then at the local level, you got to put representatives at the, at the local level. you got to put representatives in at the state level where, you know, senators and, and, and representatives at the state level. And then also, of course, at the federal level. Because if Ron Paul or Rand Paul or somebody like them, or even Gary Johnson, or somebody like him were to get to be president, he has to have the support of the representatives of other states. And right now, see, like the, the perfect example is the Koch brothers basically bought an election over there in Wisconsin, right? They totally rigged that thing, and, you know, Fox News comes out and is like, yay, look out, right, right? The, see, the people saw through the scam and so forth. No, that recall should have, should have taken place. Well, how did they get around it? Voting machines, again. And then voter fraud, right? Making it so that college kids can't vote. And then right now, the purging of, of uh, voter rolls in Florida and other states and so forth, they're doing everything they can to try and set this thing up you got to secure the vote. That's the number one thing. And you got to fight the fight. you got to keep this fight going. Nothing's changed. 
right? Your delegates need to get out there and work, right? Get out there, and part of that work is now going to be signing affidavits. And these guys want to play, you know, you guys want to play, you guys want to push, then we'll shove when it comes to saying that these guys are bound and that they, you know, you're going to sue them for perjury or whatever. Well, let's see who has the law on their sides, right? And, and if they want to try and intimidate us and shut us up, it's not going to work. All right, go to convention and do out, get out there. This thing isn't over. There's plenty of work to do. Ron Paul 2012.